it's Sarah and welcome to my crochet channel today's video is washcloth number 13 in our washcloth of the month for our crochet along 2020 now through this year we've done one washcloth a month we've learned some new techniques and had a lot of fun and so I thought that it would be fun to finish off the year with a bonus washcloth and so this is our 13th washcloth it is called the hound's tooth washcloth and it looks complicated but it's really quite easy and I'm going to show you how to do that today the washcloth measures about 10 by 10 inches so it's a nice size washcloth whether you want to use it for washing your face washing the dishes or even cleaning out the bathroom sink just don't mix up your washcloths for different cleaning needs <laughs> now you can find this crochet pattern on my blog and as always I'll put that blog link down in the notes underneath this video you'll also find a link for the page that has all 13 patterns on it that you can find those 13 pattern links and 13 video links as well to make our hound's tooth washcloth you're going to need about two ounces of two different colors and you do need two different colors in order for the stitches to appear like a hound's tooth these are all stitched with just cotton yarns that i had on hand most of them are peaches and cream sugar and cream premier cotton as well as i love this cotton this pink this light pink is a sparkle and it is from i love this cotton this bright pink is just uh, sugar and cream or peaches and cream i'm not sure which just a hundred percent cotton yarn so you're going to need two ounces of two different colors we're going to be stitching today with our eye hook which is a 5.5 millimeter crochet hook you'll need a needle just to weave in those ends and of course your scissors we're going to be starting with one color and we'll be switching back and forth every other row so I've got my other color ready to go as well we're going to begin with a slip knot and then we're going to chain 27 chains and it's real important that this initial chain not be too snug you want to chain it just a little bit loose or the end of your washcloth will pucker up on you so I'm going to chain 27 chains just a little bit loose I have chained my 27 chains and what we're going to do for row one is we're going to begin with a single crochet and the second chain from the hook there's the first so we'll go into the next pull up a loop yarn over and go through both loops and what we're going to do is we're going to stitch one single crochet in each of those chains all the way across now we begin in the second chain from the hook we started with 27 and because we did begin our stitches in the second chain from the hook we're going to have 26 single crochets and every row until we reach the trim we'll have 26 stitches so I'm just going to continue across stitching one single crochet in each of my chains across I have single crocheted in each of my chains across and I have 26 single crochets I'm going to join my color 2 in and then chain 1 and it's real important that you do that chain 1 after the color change alright so we're going to snug everything down we're going to turn our work now we are going to be stitching over 
our tail of yarn that we're not using. All right, so what we're going to do, move that one out of the way there, is we're going to stitch a single crochet in the first stitch. The chain one does not count as a stitch. So I'm going to go in that first single crochet and stitch a single crochet. And I'm stitching over this tail of yarn. The next stitch, I'm going to stitch a double crochet. And what we're going to be doing for row two is alternating single crochets and double crochets every other stitch. And we are stitching over this tail of yarn that we're not using. So single crochet, double crochet, every other stitch single crochet, double crochet, single crochet, double crochet. And we'll work this all the way across, alternating single crochets and double crochets and stitching over this tail of yarn. Single crochet and double crochet. And the only tip I want to give you here is not to pull this tail of yarn too tightly. Just let it rest and stitch over it. Watch it. Make sure it doesn't drape or loop and doesn't pull too tightly. All right, so we'll continue across, alternating single, double, single, double, all the way across and stitching over that tail of yarn. I've completed row two, stitching single, double, single, double, all the way across, alternating my stitches. And you should end with a double crochet in your last stitch. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to grab the previous color, our color one, Snug that down and chain one. Now we're going to turn our work. And this time we're going to be stitching with color one. So we'll be stitching over the color two strand of yarn. The first stitch here is a double crochet. So we're going to stitch a single crochet in that double crochet. Now we'll stitch a double crochet in the next stitch which was a single crochet. And so we're going to be alternating double and single all the way across, but we want to make sure that we're all lined up nice and even and that we're stitching our double crochets into the single crochet from the previous row. And we're stitching our single crochet in the double crochet from the previous row. And that's why it's important to make sure you began that first single crochet in that last double crochet stitch from the previous row. And this is what gives it that hound's tooth appearance. All right, so I'm going to continue stitching across, alternating my doubles and singles, and stitching over my yarn from the previous row. At first, this might seem a little complicated, but as you go along, you'll get into a rhythm of understanding where to put your stitches. When you're stitching a double crochet, it should always be in a single. And when you're stitching a single, it should always be stitched in a double crochet. And if you do that, you'll end up with this beautiful hound's tooth appearance. Now, you may be wondering why I'm having you stitch over the tail of yarn. And basically, that's so that you don't have to cut your yarn onto every end. Because if we stopped with our pink, our light pink over here, 
we would need to cut the yarn and change to our dark pink and then we would have ends that we have to weave in on every row and it wouldn't be as secure. We want this to be nice and secure because we're going to be using it to wash things with and also it's probably going to go through the laundry quite often. And so by stitching over that previous colors tell of yarn, we're making a nice sturdy washcloth that can make it through the laundry and not have all those ends coming out. All right, so for row three, we're going to continue along alternating our singles and doubles and stitching over that tail of yarn from the previous row. I have completed row three, stitching singles and doubles, alternating, making sure that my singles are stitched in the double from the previous row and my doubles are stitched in the singles from the previous row. All right, I ended again on a double crochet we're going to bring in that color two. We're going to chain one and turn. Get everything lined up here. And now we're just going to repeat what we did on row three, only we're using a different color. All right, so that last stitch was a double crochet. So we'll stitch a single crochet, making sure we stitch around that tail of yarn from the previous row. So we stitch a single crochet, double crochet in the next, single crochet in the next, double crochet in the next. And so basically we're just repeating, alternating our singles and doubles and stitching over that tail of yarn. Single, double. Single, double. We'll work this all the way across, alternating our singles and doubles, singles and doubles all the way across, and again, stitching over that tail of yarn. I have completed row four. Again, alternating my singles and doubles, making sure that I start with that single and that double crochet, and then that double crochet in the single and alternate across, ending on a double crochet. Also, stitching over the tail of yarn from the previous row. And so again, we're going to grab that next color, chain one, and turn. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to repeat row three and row four, alternating every other row. And I think when you look at this, you can already see how that hound's tooth pattern is already looking really pretty. All right, so you're going to be alternating your colors every other row, stitching single, double, single, double, stitching over those tails of yarn from the previous rows, and you're going to repeat row three and row four I've completed those additional repeats, and that brings us up to row 19, alternating every other row with every other color. And I really love how this two-tone pink one has turned out. And one of the neat things about doing it this way, where we stitch over those tails of yarn, is we don't have all those ends to weave in or worry about coming undone in the laundry. And you're also going to find it's a nice sturdy washcloth with those extra cotton yarns running through it like that. All right, so now I'm going to cut my dark pink because I want to use my light pink for my trim. And I want to use the color two because we began with color one here and then we ended with color one 
down here. And I want that to be a solid row of my color too around the edge of my washcloth. So I'm gonna bring my color two back in and this time I'm going to chain three. I'm going to turn my washcloth and I'm just going to evenly double crochet down the side of my washcloth. I want a nice substantial trim and so I'm just going to do double crochets working down the sides of my washcloth. Now there is not a set number of stitches that you need to have. And I do recommend that you do try to stitch those stitches in the sides of those stitches where you can. Like here. And that's just going to give you a much better appearance to your washcloth. Trying to go in the sides of the stitches. All right, so what we're going to do, let me move this down, is just stitch evenly down the side of our washcloth, trying to go into those sides of the stitches where possible. And you wanna be careful not to bunch up your stitches and not to get them too far apart. And again, there is not a set number of stitches you need down the side, it just needs to lay nicely. All right, so what we're going to do is we're just going to work that down to the corner and then we'll stitch two double crochets in that corner. I've stitched evenly double crochets down the side of my washcloth and this brings me to the bottom where we started. We want to stitch two double crochets in that corner. And that's going to help it move around there nice and neatly. And now because we have those stitches at the bottom, we can just place one double crochet in each of those stitches across. And so I'll just continue across, placing one single crochet in each of those stitches across. And then again, I'll place two double crochets in the corner, evenly double crochet up to the top, and then across the top of our washcloth. I stitched across the bottom of my washcloth. I placed those two double crochets in that corner and then I evenly stitched up the side of my washcloth. And so this brings me to the top. And this is super simple. You just stitch one double crochet in each of those stitches across. It doesn't matter if it was a single or a double crochet before or from the previous row, we're still gonna stitch just one double crochet in each of those stitches across. I stitch those double crochets across the top, stitching one in each of those stitches, two in the end here, and now I'm just going to join to the top of that chain three with a slip stitch. We'll cut our yarn where is that? There we go. We'll go in the next stitch and pull that loop to the back. And tie off to the back. And that just gives us a nice smooth finish. All right, so now all we have to weave in are these two ends down here and these two ends up here. And we have a nice and tidy washcloth that's good and sturdy as well. So here is the completed two-tone pink washcloth all tidied up. And of course, we also have this green and yellow one and this red and white one. And so these are perfect for baby gifts, for washcloths, for cleaning the kitchen, cleaning the bathroom, 
or whatever your cleaning needs may be. Because by adding that extra cotton thread through, it makes a nice sturdy washcloth and we don't have all those ends woven in, so it's not gonna come unraveled in the wash. Mm -hmm. 